The Dutch Volunteer Legion was a Dutch Waffen-SS unit on the Eastern Front during the Second World War. How effective was this unit and in which battles did they participate? One of these volunteers was Gerardus Moyman and he was the first foreign volunteer to be decorated with the Knight's Cross. Stay tuned. And yes, it's good to have you back on the channel. And if you're new and you're thinking, who is this guy? Why does he have an accent? Well, he's Dutch and he's a history teacher and he's hustling history for you. So if you like this, then consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. So you'll be notified when a new video comes out. The Dutch Volunteer Legion, Vrijwilligers Legioen Nederland, was set up in July 1941, a few weeks after Operation Barbarossa kicked off. The majority of the Dutch volunteers would serve in this legion. Vrijwilligen Legion Nederlande was set up. Contrary to those who volunteered earlier, these volunteers did not have to meet the strict requirements. This explains why more volunteers fought in the Legion. Dutch collaborating general Hendrik Alexander Seifert would be in command. In reality, he was more of a symbolic puppet commander and later resigned because of this. Early 1943, he was assassinated. In October 1943, the Dutch Volunteer Legion would be transformed into the 4th SS Panzergrenadier Brigade Nederland and in February 1945, the 23rd SS Panzergrenadier Division Nederland. Looking at their uniforms, well, they wore Waffen SS uniforms. There was the Dutch SS color patch of the Wolf's Angel, Wolf Hook with a cuff band. There also existed cuff bands with just Legion Nederlande or Nederland, as well as regimental cuff bands. General Seifert, named after Seifert after his death. And de Ruiter, named after the famous Dutch 17th century Admiral Michiel de Ruiter. Lastly, the flag patch. I read it existed in different forms and colors, either the rectangle Prinsenvlag, orange, white, blue, with a yellow border, or a shield-shaped patch with diagonally colors, either the Prinsenvlag or the Dutch flag, red, white, dark blue. The Dutch Volunteer Legion first saw combat in January 1942. Mid-January they were transferred by ship from Danzig, now Gdansk in Poland, to Libau, now Lipaja in Latvia, and then by train to the east facing Volkov River, southeast of Leningrad, between Lake Ladoga in the north and Lake Ilmen in the south. They were incorporated in Kampgruppe Jaske. One volunteer wrote about the local population. February 7th, 1942. How the civilian population lives here is more than sad. They all live together in one room where they all sleep in one bed where they cook. In one word, everything happens here in the same room. Of course, you don't understand the language at all. You speak sign language there. That is the wonderful paradise of the worker. You see that poverty is ideologically linked to communism. The same volunteer also wrote about the conditions on the front. The snow was on chest level and it was hard to move forward. If it had to come to a fight, we would not have been able to take our wounded with us and they would have immediately been frozen to death at a temperature of 43 degrees below zero. And the fight did come. In the first two months, the Dutch saw Soviet offensives and several occasional breakthroughs, but the Red Army didn't achieve concrete results. The Soviet pockets, as a result of the breakthroughs, were soon eliminated. While the Dutch were mopping up these pockets, Soviet General Andrei Vlasov was captured. This general would play a role in the Russian Liberation Army, the Russians that fought for Hitler. I did make an episode about that, you can check the link in the top right corner. The fighting continued till June 1942 and then the Legion was relieved. One volunteer, he wrote about his experiences. April 14th, 1942. The fields behind the houses are covered with hundreds of fallen Russian warriors. Furthermore, carcasses of cows, horses and other animals are discovered everywhere. Everything is shot. The whole reminds me of the world war. It is one big disconsolate mess. Let's hope we leave Russia soon. With the world war, he probably means the first world war. 
Later, this volunteer also wrote, July 25th, 1942, we are in position near Leningrad. According to rumors, Leningrad must have fallen on about 15th of August. That will be fierce fighting because the Russians have built a steel belt around their city. Norwegians, Flemish, Spaniards and other volunteers are all drawn together here. What I suspected before will therefore become true, namely that the United Volunteers will triumphantly invade Leningrad. Well not really, cause Leningrad wasn't captured and this volunteer was killed in action in August 1942. The Dutch Volunteers were to take part in the decisive trust on Leningrad. However, the Soviets preempted this by launching an offensive of their own and thus the Dutch took part in the first battle of Lake Ladoga in which they fought alongside Latvian and Norwegian volunteers against the Red Army. And in January 1943, the Soviets launched another operation, Operation Iskra, in which they succeeded pushing a corridor through the German siege lines. During this battle at Schlüsselburg or Schlüsselburg, a 19-year-old Dutch volunteer Gerardus Moyman spotted a company of Soviet tanks with his PAK 9738. He hit two enemy tanks. The gun then jammed, but they managed to get it working again and four enemy tanks were destroyed and another four damaged the Soviets retreated. For this, Moiman was awarded the Iron Cross second class and three days later with the first class for inspirational conduct. Moiman and his crew later took down another 13 tanks. Later his total score was 23. On February 26th, 1943 Gerardus Moemann he was awarded the Knight's Cross and that made him the first non-German to be awarded with such a decoration. He was sent home on leave and back home they obviously used him for pro-German propaganda purposes. He later stated about this the following. Yet it irritated me when the Nazis abused me as a kind of advertising object when the then mayor of Wassenaar wanted to name a square after me. I refused this because other fighters who had died in battle were just as brave as I. In those days the fight fascinated me many times more than all the frills around it. Himmler was impressed by the performance of the Dutch Legion on the Eastern Front. In April the Legion was withdrawn from the front and transferred to Germany. There it was regrouped and renamed to the 4th SS Panzergrenadier Brigade Nederland. After the summer of 1943 they were dispatched to Croatia to disarm the Italians who had surrendered by that point and saw action against the Yugoslav partisans. Here is an interesting description of one Dutch volunteer about Croatia. The merge with Germany was met with widespread resistance. Moreover, the presumptuous manner in which the Ustasha's, roughly the Croatian SA, acted also made the government unpopular. The government was therefore chronically in trouble and lacks any prestige. At the end of December 1943, the brigade was sent back to the Eastern Front and served at the Oranienbaum Front. Mid-January the Soviets launched a massive offensive. The Dutch battle group threw back repeated attacks and undertook counterattacks. They held their position to cover the retreat of other troops. They then retreated across the Luga River to set up another defensive line. The Soviets broke through and the survivors pulled back across the Narva River. From February till the summer of 1944, the Dutch volunteers fought alongside Germans, Finns, Norwegians, Danes, Estonians and Belgians against the Soviets. East from the river Narva, the Germans had established the Panther Line. Over the course of February, the defenders suffered under repeated air raids and shelling. Bitter fighting ensued. In March 1944, Hitler declared Narva a festung, a fortified city that had to be defended at all costs. The Dutch suffered badly and mid-April their casualties amounted to 87 officers dead, wounded and missing, 502 NCOs and 3139 rankers. It had the strength of only 
6,305 men in total, as one Dutch medic wrote. For days and nights, I was at the front line fighting for the village. I was the only medic to do my job with foreign units. Bullet and grenade left me indifferent when everything was in cover and there was a shout of Hilfe or Sani. Then I jumped up and ran upright until I found the wounded. This was a slaughter field, wrecked cars, thrown away weapons and dead. Then, back at the battle position, a grenade throws me on the ground and injures my left shoulder. The next grenade, my right arm. This ended this part of the war for me. In the spring, the front somewhat stabilized, however, during the summer, the Soviets launched a massive offensive and they broke through. The Germans and their volunteers, they pulled back to the Tannenberg line. During this, the regiment of General Seifert was surrounded and annihilated. Only a few survivors reached the German lines. What followed was the battle for the Tannenberg line. Now this battle should not be confused with the battle of Tannenberg that took place in the first world war. I also made a video about that. It took place somewhere else. Meanwhile, the Soviets also undertook an offensive in the south trying to cut off the Axis forces by attacking the defenders of the Tannenberg line from the rear. Mid-September, Hitler ordered the withdrawal to Latvia. There, the Dutch regiments were pushed back to the Kurland Peninsula. In the following months, they saw heavy combat there. At the end of January 1945, they departed from the same port they had arrived three years ago, Libau. This was part of Operation Hannibal, a naval operation involving the evacuation by sea of German troops and civilians from Courland, East Prussia and the Polish Corridor. The brigade was renamed to the 23rd SS Panzergrenadier Division Nederland. They were posted near Stettin and in the final weeks of the war they fought at Fürstenwalde, east of Berlin and retreated west to surrender to the US troops near Magdeburg. And that was the end of the Dutch Volunteer Legion. Yes, you can argue that some of these men fought brave like Gerardus Moeman who got awarded by the Knights Cross. But do keep in mind that these men fought for a genocidal regime and can therefore not be considered heroes or anything as such. Now, to make this more clear, I encourage you to watch the upcoming video they'll make about this topic where I will discuss the war crimes the Dutch SS volunteers had committed. Stay tuned. A big thanks to my patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Joan, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, RL and Colin Castleman. If you want to learn more about the Dutch volunteers in the Waffen SS there's a playlist you can check out right here. Do not forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you'll be notified when that next video comes out. Thanks for watching. See you later.